Welcome everybody to the Omniverse of Nick, where we are getting into part 10 of What If Daryl Died Instead of Merle. Before the video starts, as always, be sure to smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, and tune in for more future content that this channel has to offer, and smash the like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new stuff and so you can help me make this channel even bigger than it already is. And with that, we are resuming the story of Daryl and Merle and all that fun stuff with the revelation of Morgan and what he has been up to because of everything that's gone down and Woodbury and Merle and Abraham and their groups and all that. What's been happening with him? Now, pretty much the introduction to Morgan and everything like that plays out as you would expect. He's still in the apartment, he still goes crazy, he still burns it down and goes off on his own. And then we get the scene of him with it, him in the woods, killing the two strangers, and then meeting Eastman, Eastman getting bit, and that happening per the usual. And then we get him looking for Rick. Now here's where things are going to change up. He sees the tracks that Gareth and them left, but the no sanctuary carved made up sign that Rick and them made because of Terminus not being a sanctuary isn't going to be there. So Morgan is actually going to go to Terminus and yeah, whenever he gets there, it's vacant. No one's there, and when he looks closer into the depths of Terminus, he sees the human meat and the weapons, and that this place is a literal death trap. He also finds the train cars with the crazy people, and tries to help them. But that doesn't go too well, because, you know, there really wasn't much to save whenever it came to those people. So, with that, he sees this place as a lost cause and that Rick and them are not here. So, he decides to continue on, finds Father Gabriel's church, and he's not going to find the map with the note on it saying the New World's gonna need Rick Rhymes because Abraham, Rosita, and Eugene came here alone with Gabriel and them, and then Don and the Gareth and those people just joined in. So, Morgan's going to stay at the church for a minute, but now he doesn't know where to go. He doesn't know whether to press onwards to a, just keep looking in random locations or to just maybe give up. But then, he remembers what Rick told him very vividly, or smallly, you know? He remembers Rick talking about a prison. So, Morgan decides, even though he doesn't know where it's exactly located, to go past the place where his old apartment was and try to locate the prison. Soon enough, after some travel, he stumbles upon a very big town and with a lot of people. It seems very, very nice. And Merle greets him at the gates of the town, because of course there would be plenty of lookouts seeing him, and asks him what he can do for him, what's his business here. Morgan says his name and introduces himself, and says that he's come a long way, and he's looking for a man named Rick Grimes, and he wanted to know that if this big town had him in it, or if he knew where he was. And Merle says, it's very ironic you should mention that, because Rick Grimes does live here, and he's actually one of the most best members of this town and how it's gotten to this point. And so, Merle at that point has been told all he needs to know. He shouts out to the center of the town saying, Officer Friendly, you got a visitor. And with that, Rick runs towards the gates to see Morgan, and this would be a much better reunion 
than we got at season five's ending of Alexandria because Rick is not evil here. Because really, besides losing Lori and Shane and Sophia, Rick's character development is vastly different. So this would be a much better reunion between the two. Andrea, not knowing Morgan, but still wanting to talk to him, asks Morgan a specific question. If he's been out there and whatnot and been through all this, has Morgan seen, and she identifies, Abraham, Rosita, and Eugene because they were going to Washington and who knows if they might have, if he might have stumbled across them because they were going to Washington because Eugene had a cure or whatnot. They turned them down and she explains the whole deal. Morgan says no, but he did run across some very interesting and serious things that made him doubt that if Rick and, and whoever else was still even alive. And then he mentions Terminus and the church and all of what he found there. And he was about to give up whenever he remembers very, not in depthly, about the prison because he was still crazy. So he decided to try and go that route and he guessed that it was very lucky that he came across this town because he's guessing that this is what Rick was talking about winning a battle or something. And Merle would explain this in more in depth and say that he must have meant about the governor and being in battle with him. And it's all thanks to Merle here that they were able to win this fight. And he's the leader of this town and Rick and them have all helped. And Morgan is more than welcome to stay since him and Rick are friends. And he can stay and contribute with the town and everything like that. And Morgan, he's not going to argue with this. He's not going to get an axe from Michonne or anything like that, but I think that the best that we can give Morgan around this point, since he's still a pacifist, is make his stick more durable and much better whenever it comes to combat. He was already a boss with the stick. I'm just talking like the best we can give him with that aspect. Meanwhile, we get a much bigger group going to Washington. All of Dawn's officers, including herself, Noah, Abraham, Rosita, Eugene, and Gabriel, along with a finger shot off, handcuffed Gareth. Now this is very important, so I want you guys to pay attention to this. Eugene's thought process is going to be a lot different here. He's not going to rig the bus and cause them to get off course and that all to happen. Now, this is going to go way more in depth in the next episode, but he is going to have second thoughts about the, the closer that they get, the more he's wanting to confess, but it's going to be died down because of the bigger group going with them and it not just being down to the five or six of them that were going originally. So he's not going to admit it the way he did before, specifically this scene where Abraham and them would originally be standing at that big, huge horde like in front of them, but with a much bigger group, when they stop, it's going to be a lot different to how they manage it. Now, how will Don, Abraham, and Gareth, and all these new characters handle getting through this horde and getting to Washington? Now that Morgan's at Woodbury and all these changes have happened, how will this go into finding Abraham and them in the future, or will they at all? And do you think that they will actually make it to Washington, or do you think it will be a lost cause? Find out next time. You guys didn't think this was the end of the video, did you? Well, the Omniverse of Nick has a new feature. A sneak peek at what's next to arrive.